What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Gamer Dad Podcast, episode two, with your hosts, Ultimate Angelo and Shluku, Yo, that guy. Me. I am, I am the being of corporeal form. <laughs> Absolutely. For state of matter, I can't, I can't clarify. But it exists. <laughs> and today, we are actually going to cover a couple different things. Uh, two different sides of Twitter, as I like to call it. Two different sides of Twitter, uh, fair enough. You have an absolute angel of a being at work and an absolute <laughs> dickhead. So <laughs> okay, so like, we'll, we'll start with we'll start with I guess the worst of the two. So I don't I don't know much about Neil as, as, as a person. I know that he is the head writer for Molecule. Yes, sir. Um, he's directed I think Uncharted and The Last of Us. Or is that the one that I'm not backing that? Up? No, I'm pretty sure he directed The Last of Us Part Two. Is it just Part Two or did he do Part One? I don't remember. We can Google it. Yeah, we sure can. <laughs> We're going to do that, actually, <laughs> so we can get our facts straight. And hopefully you guys uh, will be able to enjoy... Uh, I'm going to just have snippets of Kirby gameplay. We're playing Forgotten Land here. I don't know if we're going to be playing co-op or if we're going to just like trade off playing uh, the game as we slowly talk. Um, but it will be here in the background. Hopefully you guys can enjoy that. Um, and the, 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 the last time I had the, the, the image, that'll be like... Stuff you don't really care about, but um. Anyway, so Neil Druckmann, I, I don't personally align with the man politically, I guess, because he seems like he has some really out there spicy takes on stuff. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing against him personally. I don't. I don't. I'm not a big uh, Naughty Dog guy. I think the last Naughty Dog game I played was Jack and Daxter Three. Oh God. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. To to say the least. <laughs> Your Naughty Dog experience is a... I'm not a Naughty Dog kind of guy. So. Um, I will say, though, I do I do appreciate the story of The Last of Us. Um, while my, I have my reservations about The Last of Us 2, um, I, think, I think the story is still good overall. Um, but it's just personal, right? It's nothing that I like would dramatically change or, or call like out for it with my head. I used some scenes that I felt like could have been taken out of The Last of Us 2, but overall that's just my um, but he, he went on Twitter a while ago, um, I think it was, yeah, back in February, I think, he basically went on a, on a tweet, he, and this is something I, I personally kind of disagree with, and I'll, I'll have, I have the tablet full of screen. Yeah, what's up with it? I'll, I'll read it for you. If your game deals with serious subject matter, then it is inher- inherently political. If that's a problem, make a new game. Otherwise, you owe it to your game to lean into it. Doing your damnest to treat it as honestly, completely as possible, worse than all. So, basically stating that, like, if, you, if you're dealing with, like, say, The Last of Us dealt with, like, the, 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 the world after the apocalypse and Abby and Ellie and what was the girl uh, in the second one? That uh, they, Abby. Abby? Mia. No, 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 the one she dates. Oh, uh. Um, Abby was the second one. She was, like, a different character. Uh, shit. What was her name? I forget, because, you know, I mean, she really was a... I mean, yeah. She, she was a smart character. She didn't fuck with much shit. No, no, no. Um, man, so like, it's kind of like. I know she was a love interest. Yeah, she was a love interest. Um, the Last of Us Part Two, <clears throat> in in my opinion, was actually just kind of really bad. Really? Um, they made some story beats and decisions that would that would work yeah. if it wasn't a Last of Us game. Okay. With these characters, okay. and like, so I mean, I don't want to dive too. Much yeah, into I don't. The game. I don't want to dive too much into the game. Yeah, because this just is a lot of weird things happen. It almost feels like most of the game took place out of order. So as that, well. that, that's something I can agree on. But I, like I said, I don't want to focus too much on the, on the yeah. Last of Us two itself because this this is specifically the two games I want. to Yeah. Talk about. No, I, and then you know what? Yeah. Yeah. This <laughs> oh, is this okay. is a sorry. This is a mighty pretentious tweet, if you're asking me. Well, that's because... my biggest issue with Druckmann, is that he's super pretentious about everything he does. Yeah. Um, and this is a mighty stupid take. Because there have been God. games that have had politics, political views, and Metal all these Rising. other things that definitely did not like. <laughs> no, Metal Gear Rising was a good game. Metal Gear, the series, was 
is completely political in. And I feel like that game handles politics a lot better. He does because it it handles politics in. Yeah, this is gonna sound weird as well in a goofy but correct way, <laughs> in my opinion. I mean, you have to be politics goofy. Politics is extremely goofy, <laughs> like the boo boo. Um, yeah, the goofy movie is enjoyable, so it's gonna be rising. Last you know, like, of Us, right? Well, just Metal Gear in general, not Metal yeah. Gear itself. But, like, yeah, like, having a having a, a, a heavy story, like, theme-wise, like, doesn't inherently make it this political. No, absolutely because not. stating that you need to lean into the politics of a specific thing, it, it just comes off as, like, how, how, how am I trying to say this? Like, you can have topics that have been discussed in political discourse without making it political. Pretty much. And it, it's, it, it's hard to do that in our current social climate because everybody wants to be political about everything. Like, in my opinion, politics are, are cults. They're, they're very dogmatic. It's very much a, you're either with me or against me. Yeah. And it's, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they definitely, I mean, everything has their, you know, extremist angles. Of and course those people that take it way too fucking far. Mm-hmm. Um, and right there, that, in my opinion, is an example of an extremist angle. Um, almost like he's kind of trying to be a... Ah, what's the word? It's those... Activist? No, nah, not even activist. Because, like... And, and perfectionist isn't the word either. But it, it is those type of people that believe everything they say, everything they do, is, like, the way idealist? it should be. I don't even know if idealist is right either. No, it's certainly not philosophist. But, like, you know, it's, like I said, that tweet comes off extremely pretentious, it and does. and it is extremely wrong on almost yeah. all accounts. I mean, if we want to talk about some games that have some heavy themes but don't get political, like, political about it, uh, game that's in the background right now, fucking Kirby. Yeah. All right? Kirby deals with, with very heavy themes, especially in the late game. Yeah. The concept of soul, body, fucking life, death, chaos, order, fucking... Like, it, it gets deep, but it's not political because it's a kid's game. Mario can be can have a huge story. Zelda has had huge stories, and, and they aren't political in nature. Yeah. Um, but more other games, like, I mean, Halo has a very deep, like, very heavy theme story, but I don't feel like it's too political. I mean, it's literally a story about us fighting fucking monsters from space and you have a dude who's a super soldier and you know what i feel like i feel like where he's getting the wrong idea is he's trying to i look you feel like he's trying to say state that to the only way to do things politically correctly in a work of fiction is to make it as real to the ground and 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 and, and all this type of stuff rooted in reality as possible it's like, you don't need to do that. I read, I read differently. I read, as I'm saying, like, to tell to tell a deeper story, you have to lean into the politics of it, or else the story has no merit. It has no purpose. That's what that reads to me. He's saying, if you don't talk about the political side of the story, you're, you don't have any reason to tell that story. Mm. Uh, otherwise, your game is just like a more fun game than that. Like a multiplayer, or you know, something like that, where you're not particularly telling anything. Yeah. Meaningful. He's a, he's essentially like how it is essentially equating politics to meaning. Without meaning, there's no reason to make it. I, c- I can kind of see where you're going with, but um, like I said, it's just kind of his phrasing as it as well. He's like, yeah. you know, he's more putting it on the lines of if if you're even going to have politics in your game, yeah, you you need to dive deep balls it into that shit, be, make that the main focus. Like, it needs to be shoved down the throat of everybody who touches the controller. I think yeah, and it's like, no, that's that's certainly stupid. Oh, it's uh, on the next stage, my guy. Oh, <laughs> sure. I think we'll just trade off. Okay. Um, but, but, yeah, yeah. no, that, that is... It, it definitely comes off as narrative. Definitely an example of an extremist and kind of pretentious view. Yeah. Specifically because he paid off the Game Awards to give his game all the rewards and all that okay, stuff. Okay, we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about that. That is, that is, that is... Allegedly, we don't, we're not making solid claims about anybody paying off. Fuck that. Yeah, no, you know, that motherfucking guy. He, he spent the bank on that bitch, that is, bro. That is, that is a good way to get us sued. <laughs> ah, whatever. Get on that. <laughs> it's like people who said that, uh, who think that FromSoft paid off the Game Awards and then got awarded when Game of the Year. 
Oh no. No, here's the difference between between what happened uh you know, the game of the year where uh, Last of Us Two was involved and God of War and Elden Ring was involved. Um Elden Ring or God of War did not absolutely come into that show and fucking sweep. Yeah. <laughs> like Bro, it was a meme. <laughs> like that's how hard The Last of Us Two undeservingly sweeped the game awards that year. Oh. Like everybody was like every every five minutes, The Last of Us Part Two. The Last of Us Part Two. The award goes to The Last of Us Part Two. Last of Us Part Two would have won the candy selling award if it was there. Alright? <laughs> like I promise you. Okay. Something happened there. Okay. I'm not. You I, no. Actually, I, I'm gonna say I can yeah. Neither confirm nor deny the, st- the statements made here today. We are not <laughs> assuming or st- alleging anything. I am the fucking. F- <laughs> All right. Second episode of Love We Got Guys. Yeah. See y'all in our new podcast. I'll see, I'll, I'll, we'll see everybody in the court with heels dropping. The new gamer day podcast. <laughs> 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 um. But I do, I do also, there's a tweet, there's a response to the tweet, and I'm not going to let the person who tweeted this tweet sure. go and stop. Gotcha. Or, like, send hate their way. Yeah. Because they don't deserve it, because the person's giving their opinion. Um, you can't give your opinion, it's 2023. Heaven forbid you have a thought that may not align with other people in your area. Are you insane, fuckboy? <laughs> oh, and he says, gamers, in quotation marks, gamers, only think it's political when it's something they don't agree with. They only care about the historical accuracy when the inaccuracies don't line up with their worldview. Ignore the impact of gaming. Mm. So, my question to that is, what does that have to do with The Last of Us? <laughs> <laughs> what does that have to do with any of, the, of Jocelyn's works? Well, he, as I'm aware, he hasn't done anything with a World War II setting. He hasn't done, he's done mainly, like, modern day to apocalypse scenario stories, correct? Um, sort of. I mean... I mean I'm not a follower of Jocelyn. So, I don't so know yeah, Jocelyn, he, I think his first game with Naughty Dog was Uncharted 2. And from then on, he did do the first Last of Us, mm-hmm. Uncharted 3, Uncharted 4, Last of Us 2, all the Last of Us spinoffs. Yeah. That's, you know, that's got his touch on it. Okay. Um, so, it's, uh, oh my god, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> um, so, none of those games, yeah, none of those games touched on war times or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, it was nothing to do with inaccuracies of the, of the past or the history. Yeah. So the, the tweet response just makes no fucking sense. Um, it's just somebody kind of trying to, like... Like, agree, but, like, not giving anything specific so that they can be countered in an argument. It's a straw man. Yeah, essentially, the famous straw man. <laughs> <laughs> they come in bunches, I tell you. That's, like, any kind of political, like, discourse happen, it, it's 90% straw man. Almost, right? Like, that's why I dislike politi- politics, but, like, in this instance of tweet, like, I just, I, I wanted to bring it up because you brought up very said it was a positive experience from this like when anytime i see like Druckmann or ubisoft developers like <laughs> from what it sounds like in the kishimoto scenario it sounds like what developers should be doing with their career oh absolutely but we have people like when elden ring release remember how all the developers were shit talking from soft saying oh their ui is garbage and it's <laughs> how can anybody be expected to understand it's like because some companies don't treat people like people like they're fucking five-year-olds yes yeah, yeah. Not um, you know, not not out here being a uh, old kindergartens picking up the sticks for the old first time like. Um, we're gonna die. We're wasting our time. Apologize. <laughs> I don't want to do that. This is not a political podcast. Um, but I guess you can keep your power, by the way. The suck. You don't have to. You don't have to use your power to do that. Oh, do you not? No, you can keep it. Oh well. But, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, you uh, th- there was an instance. Damn, it happens that way sometimes, dog. Um, I mean, we can we can move on to Mario Kishimoto. Yeah, we can do Mario Kishimoto. So do you want to do you want to pull up the tweets on the on the tablet here since we only have references to read, or do you want to do all your plans? Um, absolutely not, because oh, okay. I believe all his tweets had to be translated. <laughs> he uh, is a, a man of Japanese descent, right? So <laughs> Japanese people talk to them. Yeah. Everywhere. So um, I'm not even sure we can even find the translated tweets anywhere. But I'll, I'll just ad-lib here real quick and kind of go over the basics of 
what was going on. So, about a couple months after the release of Sonic Frontiers, yeah. the latest and greatest of the Sonic series. I mean, the fucking um, soundtrack. Too. I'm getting to play it. Absolute banger. Ain't it criminal that that soundtrack didn't even get nominated Bro, at the Game Awards? Sonic Frontiers also had Genshin in that. Highway robbery. But anyway, um, Sonic Frontiers released a roadmap for the game. Mm-hmm. What they're going to do DLC-wise, what they have planned for the future, and all that good jazz. Yeah. Um, shortly after that, he went on to Twitter mm-hmm. and was like, yo, I'm here to answer some questions. Okay. Any questions y'all got, any things y'all want to say, I plan to be as transparent as I can be. Because, mm-hmm. you know, there's only so much you can say uh, as a developer developing things. Don't want to spoil shit. And so... That's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. Everybody kind of came around, started asking them things, started giving them their grievances on, you know, Sonic Frontiers as a game, what right. what they loved, what they didn't like, what they want to see done better. Uh, some people tried to sneak DLC questions in there, uh, which he actually would answer some of them. Didn't, didn't go into all of them. Um... Right. But in all, you know, is taking criticisms, taking ideas, asking, answering questions about the future of Sonic, even uh, in terms of what characters he would like to appear in future games. He answered. He actually vaguely spoiled. Funny enough, now that I'm looking back at it, uh, the April Fool's game, without spoiling the April Fool's game. Is it you know, the song that I know? Yes. Uh, long story short, somebody asked him, like, you know, what, what, what next project is gonna come out of, you know, Sonic Team and all that stuff. Um, he, he did give the long way around and saying it was gonna be a 2D game. Which, you know, a lot of people thought, you know, oh shit, full-fledged, like, 2D, you know, back-to-the-roots type of game. No, I think he might have, like, just been hinting at the April Fool's game that nobody, uh, knew was coming. Uh, give this man the suck. Wow. Not that the suck. I did not want to suck that. You suck too loud. You suck, suck too late. Oh man, I hate when that happens. <laughs> Ever wake up at 3 a.m. and get the late suck? Oh, I hate the late suck. Unless it's the late suck on water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gee, 3 a.m. Water? water? Fantastic. Love some water. I would love some water. Okay, let me just real quick. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep going. Um, so, with that being said, all the interactions. Even, like, negative interactions, criticisms on the game, wholesome, completely wholesome, um, honest. He was he was answering what they would want and would like to see in the game, because he, he admits that, like, the next 3D Sonic game, he wants to take his time with it, just like they did Frontiers, which, all oh, power to you, please do, because Frontiers turned out amazing. I want to play it, I just don't have the money to purchase it right now, but yeah. the, the chance that I get to, I mean, if you want to, you can Together, oh yeah, together. yeah. No, I absolutely will if you're interested. Cause, oh yeah, um, I'm, I'm definitely down because I, I want to play that game. I just don't have the money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolute banger of a game. Oh my god, the the soundtrack alone makes un- undefeatable. Oh my god. Uh, my personal favorite is Breakthrough and All, the second one. That's actually my favorite fight in the game, by the way. Uh, my, the I Wyvern. Think favorite, I think my favorite goes like this: It's Undefeatable, Find Your Clue, Breakthrough and All, and I'm here. Yeah, like that's about the same, except for. I would put Find Your Flame in second, Undefeatable third, and I'm here last uh, with Breakthrough It All at first. Um, But yeah, no, 600% transparency with questions, night, like kindness, people expressing, you know, any ideas. Like some people would actually like tweet it straight up. Um,. Straight up ideas to implement like new moves into the game. Yeah. Uh, he was like, you know what? That's a good idea. We we might see if we could put that in one of the updates. Yeah. Because right now update one is out, right? Okay. It was just a it was a jukebox that they put in the game. Yeah. It was a photo mode. Oh, you got to get the cone. Oh, you're right. Cracks. It was a jukebox. It was a photo mode, and it was a right. um, challenge uh, run. They got two challenges runs with a uh, cyberspace. And a challenge run with a kind of like a DMC Dante Must Die tower type of thing. 
where you have okay. individual fights and then you have the boss fights at the end of those towers. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, okay. and that gave, that gave us a way to replay the boss fights because there wasn't a way unless you made a save uh, beforehand right. to go back to. Um, anyway, <laughs> it was definitely a, a fantastic update in my opinion. Um, but yeah. People would ask him questions about development. Yeah. What do they want to, want to put in the game with the future of, of the updates? Right. He he went as far as to say, like, by update three, yeah. he wants Sonic Frontiers to be almost a completely different game. Interesting. Okay. They, they want to implement so much stuff mechanical-wise. They want to fix a lot of bugs. They want to introduce new things into these updates. Okay. Um... All these things that sound amazing. Um, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> all in all, like just a really um, wholesome, wholesome, interaction wholesome thing. interaction. Solid thread takes criticism without lashing out at people or thinking right. that he's, you know, all all right and did everything right. Like he's just the best. He set a positive image onto the future of okay. not only Frontiers as a game but Sonic as a whole. That's, that's like. It was just amazing. It was one of the most amazing things I've seen on Twitter. Like, complete 100 transparency on what he can be. Mm-hmm. It was it was amazing. I That is the interaction. That is how developers should use Twitter, and, in my opinion. I think that's very indicative of, of just Sonic in general. Yeah. Like, Sega as a company, while they still aren't making games like they, they should make, like Jet Set and Channel 5. Yeah, Channel Radio 5 or Jet Set Radio, all that stuff. Jet Set Radio would be a cool one, although we're getting Cyberpunk bomb or cyber bomb punk lush rush whatever the fuck something like that yeah cyberpunk hey. something rush i know i know that yeah and it's made by the dudes who made um originally the uh uh geez, my brain fuck <laughs> they they originally made um i overshot that shit jesus christ jet set radio oh god my i'm like the wild man the yeah wild setting in. hey you're dead <laughs> Dad fog, anybody? <laughs> Dad fog, we um, get it. And, and and like you know, they have again, Series Channel Five. Um, they do. Uh, they they do Poyo Poyo. They haven't had a new Poyo Poyo since the three DS days. Besides the Tetris Poyo Poyo. Yeah. Like a standalone Poyo Poyo, we haven't had. Um, Monkey Ball, a new Monkey Ball, not a re-release, because I think the last one was a re-release. I think we are getting a new Samba de Amigo, which is it hype. was crazy, right? Yeah. That they dropped that in the direct. Unexpected. Yeah. Like a 2024 Samba de Amigo? You guys are nuts! Um, and, and just some other stuff that I'd like. I mean, I can dream. Imagine that. Yeah. Imagine the failure of the land wonder world. And <laughs> Sega Team's like, ah, here's Nights in the Dreams. It's the yeah, best that's, fucking thing. Best fucking thing, thing ever. Uh, but no, By the um, way, didn't they fumble that title? Ballet and Wonder World? Oh, it's fucking dog awful. <laughs> oh, man. It's like all the face buttons are the same. Like, yeah. Jump. Like, it's the only thing that changes your costumes, but like, they work on Mario rules, so you get it once you lose a costume. It's like, uh, it's so fucking bad. Why did you MFers name it Battle Land Wonderland? Like, that... Because, because <laughs> anyway. what's, his, what's his name? The fucking, the dude who stole or did insider trading with the stock market? Oh, we're not gonna talk about fucking, it. Fucking, uh, <laughs> Takeshi Tezuka? Yeah, something. Fucking. Hey, bro. He, he's the, he's the one that made Knights and Sonic, and he, like, he just makes up shit sometimes. Bro, he was wildin'. <laughs> anyway. Oh, uh, I will say, uh, fucking Valiant Wonder World, uh, the best fucking dance sequence. Fucking up for pretend. Fucking for pretend. Let's go. <laughs> um, but no, that sounds awesome. I'm, I, I really, I really appreciate developers who, who make a point to take fan initiative and criticism. Because I mean, here, here's the thing: is like fans and and players. While while we all like things and we all want things to be better. Yeah. We don't know how to make a game. No, we don't know how to make a game. Like, I this have, is true. I've been playing games since I was a young lad. You know, fucking... I was born in the time frame of 64 and the Super Nintendo. Mm. PlayStation had just come out. I I have all those. Yeah. That was my, my time as a young boy. Um, I was a GameCube boy. Yeah. So, like, I definitely... Still have the N64, though. Um, I definitely had, um, had a lot of time to play games as I've grown up. Absolutely, and I do. I do know, like, I, some things I think, like, generally, is like in a good game, are like, you need a good gameplay above anything else to be 
gameplay should be your first priority. Does the game play well? Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> is it intuitive? And, and intuitive can be really hard to pin down for a lot of people. Because, like, what's intuitive to one person may not be intuitive to the next person. Exactly. Some person may look at Tetris and, and, and say, I don't know what the fuck is happening. <laughs> yeah. While another person looks at Call of Duty and says, I fucking don't understand this either. Yeah. You know, intuitiveness is, is different. And you, the younger you are as you get into doing video games, the easier it is for you to adapt to the medium. For um, sure, for sure. So, you know, like, intuitiveness is a big one. Um, I feel like games, like, you know, Elden Ring's intuitiveness was a big talking point when they launched, and I feel like Elden Ring is a game that is not intuitive to new players. I disagree, <sighs> actually. Um, okay. And here's why. Another case of, another yeah. Case of here's uh, a wild direction. opposite. Of, yeah, yeah. Here's why. Um, so, not to get my my uh, 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 another gaming sin. Here we go. Um, you're just gonna, you're just bro, listen. Sign yourself out the entire time. Almost <laughs> right. Um, Elden Ring was my first genuine full playthrough of a Soulsborne game. Of a from soft. From soft Soulsborne game. Yeah. Of of the latter. Elden so. Soulsborne. Yeah, Elden Souls. Yeah, that that yeah, Elden <laughs> Soulsborne. I guess that's what the new title could be. Yeah. Or um, Elden Soulsborne. Shadow. Yeah, <laughs> and just the new game in the so take it from a guy that actually didn't fall down the tutorial hole. Eighty oh, hours really? in into the game, really? I went eighty hours into the game without falling down the tutorial hole. Yeah, and I managed just fine. Okay. So like, and that may be chopped up to just kind of generalized video game experience. Maybe, maybe. But if you ask me. If you just <laughs> kind of fucked around and find out, Elden Ring wasn't too difficult. Well, I think the thing that gets a lot of people with the, the, the FromSoft games is they they don't like the fact that it's it, you're going to die a lot. Which, mm-hmm. And this is something I, I've said, and I'm going to say this to the is that dying is not a big deal in, in Elden Ring. Absolutely not. Like, if you're playing the game conservatively, if you're, like, I mean, you're not like me. Political conversation. <laughs> when you're playing a Soulsborne game with the mindset of everything could kill me, so let me not stockpile resources. Yeah. You're probably going to have a better time with the game. Yeah. Because if you're worried about dying and losing, just spend your stuff. That's that's true. Don't try to wait for twelve level ups. Level up one time every fucking Yeah, hour one at a time. time. Definitely treat yeah. that as baby steps. Yeah. You treat Elden Ring as baby steps, you're gonna have a blast. Okay? But like the thing people say is like, oh, I, I you know, I, you know, I die seven million times. It's, it's bullshit. And I'm like, well, well, stay away from that seagull, John. Well, <laughs> fucks so, you up. So the the thing is, this is why I think Neil Druckmann. We can circle back to Neil Druckmann. Yeah. Statement. The the statement of having a deep story or a dark story, you know, making it political. Yeah. Is just stupid for the fact that like. You can have the themes of a game be the thing that's important to the story, and that can be more impactful than the actual dialogue or set pieces. Absolutely. So, like, The Last of Us 1, it entails the story of two survivors, a broken man who lost his daughter when the initial outbreak happened, and this girl who has no one, and they form this bond as they travel. Both of them are hurt and broken people that eventually come to trust each other, and they form a new bond with each other that, you know, kind of helps replace the one that they had Lost. from a long ago. Yeah. Um, and that's a theme of the game. And in Elden Ring and a lot of Soulsborne games rely on the theme of the world is harsh and unforgiving. And the only thing that will see you through it is your determination to face the challenges head on. And if you aren't willing to do that, then you're just going to lose. Yeah, you're going to suffer for it. So, and I think... Oh, I can't <laughs> what happens? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, and that's the theme of the game, and I feel like that's important, especially when you're playing a game. You gotta look at the themes and how that relates to the gameplay because that can help you understand mechanics too. And then a good developer should rely on that ability to convey mechanics in a particular way that does relate to the themes of the game. 
Absolutely. I mean, fucking Mario's theme is he's a red man that eats a mushroom, goes jump wahoo. And saves a princess. Yeah, saving a princess. Saving a princess. Bowser the big mean boy. So long, gay Bowser. Cowards. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. Because Bowser could be the best gay icon in gaming. Absolutely. Honestly, I I would I would love it if they had a story where Bowser was 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 gay. I'm not gonna take it that far. Why not? That 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 is. Yeah, look. Give, me, give me gay characters and I'll be happy. Yeah. Well, like, there is there is my thing, though. Give me um, gay characters where their qualities isn't just being gay. Yeah. Their whole character is, I'm gay. Yeah. Give See, me that shit. That's why, uh, that's why uh, my favorite gay comic book is actually the Analog Superhero Rescue Girl number three. Mm, explain. Um, so, their relationship is literally, like, they're just dudes. Yeah. Just, it, like, you, you wouldn't tell they're gay initially. But they have, they are gay, and they just they love each other, and that's their yeah. whole character. They're not, their their characters aren't. I'm gay man. One, I'm gay man. Two, they're they're characters that <laughs> they are individuals. Are fleshed and they out. Just happen to love each other. Yeah, because that's hey, guess what? That's a character. <laughs> yeah, heaven forbid you want these be- these people to be people. And not Multiple a, qualities. Not just a you a know. Label. Yeah, not just. <laughs> Let me <laughs> let me be this one thing yeah. forever and never do anything and else. I, mean, it, it, I love it because their relationship is so good. Yeah, like they're they're like they have fear. They they worry about you know how they're impacting the other person. It's it's a good wholesome like concept for a relationship. I love it. It's really yeah. good. Um, and that that's what we call fantastic characterization. Yeah. Um, but there we to, go. Back to what we were fucking talking. We about. were talking about Sonic, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic's gay confirmed. <laughs> Sonic just Bruno Mars is gay. Right? Yeah. But anyway, to... Just Bruno Mars is gay. Yeah, to... Just gay Bruno Mars is. Roll back around to that, though. But no, um, we're talking about developers. And yeah, like, developers and like, how they use their developers. platforms. And, yeah. yeah, basically how developers communicate with gamers nowadays. And I get it. You, gamers, we suck. We fucking suck. Oh, yeah, the if hardest of dicks. I can tell you the amount I've seen some of these threatened death threats over, over nothing. Over a blade of grass being blue. Yeah. When it like, should have been red oh, or something. Fucking do this. You're paid by insert high quality developer here. Yeah. You have billions of dollars to make this game. How could you be so fucking incompetent? It's like, <laughs> nobody fucking wants you to be in existence because you're worthless. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely as a demographic, uh, gamers. We have made ourselves into bad people. <laughs> We we suffer from the uh the loud minority. We we I mean, everybody every demographic suffers from the yeah, loud, loud minority. minority always ruins our friends. Absolutely. Um, um, but that is also not to say, like I said, I liked especially what Kishimoto was doing because you could tell that he was like genuinely, also kind of taking notes. Yeah. You know, like genuinely like hearing these people's concerns or 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 wishes or thoughts or ideas, and he's just like, you know what? That shit's kind of good. I'll, yeah. I'll bring it up. You know what I mean? And I, I like that a lot. Um, because, again, you cannot make everybody happy. No. Never. Not <laughs> in, in no situation, shape, or form. I wanted to knock you off. In no situation, shape, or form, can you make everybody happy. Um, yes. However, to recognize that some people can give genuine advice, yeah. can give genuine criticism. Not, not everybody's out to get you. Yeah. And and not explode, but but accept you know what is being said. I that's that's valuable in this yeah. market. I feel like you 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 do that. You're just bound for success at that point. Yeah, because I mean, Christ. it shows it shows that you actually care about about the people who purchase your product. And yeah, there's a there's a very large lack of that in every market. Really. Pretty much, yeah. Like you you tell you tell somebody that oh I don't appreciate the X thing you did with this product and they look at you like. Fuck you're stupid. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> what do you fucking know? Like we we spend billions of dollars to to make these marketing plans. We know better than the populace. Like, yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. No. So, I mean, to to wrap it up a little bit more, absolutely hats off yeah. to Mortal no, Kishimoto yeah. and giving, Sonic Team. Giving a voice to people to play your games is, is 
good because, you know, while you might not always use all of it, just letting people get the experience of saying, hey, I, I will at least bring it up. Yeah. It, 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 it makes people hopeful for the podcast that they kind of never want to listen to. Yeah, and again, in, in the vein of Sonic Frontiers, it's definitely a product that didn't come out perfect because they were trying something new, but by God, do they have a recipe for something st- stupid. Like, like I said, the game looks fantastic every time I see it. I, I promise you, the next like 3D Sonic game that they... He calls it the, the third generation of Sonic games, Sonic Frontiers 1, okay, uh, so is going to be pretty wild, awesome. in my opinion. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So, I think, yeah, that's a good, that's a good stopping point. I think we've gone down some tangents. But, <laughs> a little um, bit. I do, I do want to bring up our next one, and you haven't heard about this, apparently. Mm. It's a game coming out uh, that I have, I've seen before, and I, we've just got more info on it, called Unrecorded. It's a body cam first-person shooting game where you play as a tactical operations officer, and you go into uh, places with body cam. So your, your viewpoint is the body cam. It's not FPS. It's yeah. Not from the eyes of the people. From the body cam. From the body cam. Interesting. Um... And the thing that people are getting really hyped about is the fact that it looks very realistic in terms of, of the presentation graphics and things. Really? Like, it, it, some people are kind of amazed that it isn't real body cam footage and that it's an actual game. And I'll, 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 look, I'll play the trailer here for you just so you can get the context of it. Yeah. Um, so that's the game. No shit. Yeah. Um... So while he's watching that, I'll kind of go over my, my thoughts about it. it. It looks insane. Sure, graphics aren't everything, but the yeah. presentation alone, I think, is the key point for this. Yeah, presentation is, yeah. Because, so. like, I can see kind of what they could be going for here, mm-hmm. right? Um, in terms of gaming engine, I'm pretty sure this is still running Unreal Engine 4, most likely. It, it's either 4 or 5, I know that much. I don't think it's five. I don't think we're getting anything five for at least like another year and a half or no, they're, so. They're, uh, I think Street Fighter Six is five. No, nah, six, uh, six is four. Is it on four? I thought yeah, it was on four. five. Wow. Okay. Um, but with that being said, though, they also got the body cam footage, kind of look at like a bit rate of like seven twenty p or mm-hmm. or maybe like the so body like, cam. The body cam point of view definitely does look a little low res because it's body cam. Yeah, so it's body cam, so it's making it look like you know that much better. Yeah. Uh, and more realistic. This is crazy. This looks yeah. nice. It looks insane. And I mean, the, 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 the I think this is just one level. I don't think this is the whole game. Yeah. So, like, it, it, it kind of tackles the, the, the fear of going into these high pressure situations as the officers and like, blah, 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 blah. You know, we're not going to talk political again, but, but, like, but just the concept of the game going into this high tense environment and having dudes shoot at you, and especially from the viewpoint of the game where you are watching through the body cam. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna build a yeah, lot I, of tension. Yeah, I absolutely love how the body cam view is like kind of obscured as well. Like, it's not you don't have six hundred percent clarity. Yeah, um, it, it it very much it's is, got a kind of fish eye lens going on as well. Yeah, and I think this game, th- this basis, whenever this game comes out, could be a great basis for a cop based horror game. Ooh, like ooh, I like that idea. Like, imagine a supernatural game with the body cam for you. Like a Silent Hill as Sybil, but from the body cam. Yeah, it wasn't. God, I can't think of Silent Hill without thinking about the PT. <clears throat> such a uh, such a loss in gaming, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't want to. Get... We're not we're not gonna get too far into uh, this. Is your thing, so yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, sorry. That was the that was the footage again. It looks fucking phenomenal. Yeah, that does look crazy. Um, Who's developing that? It's a single developer, I believe. Really? One or two. It's like a small team. I know that much. I don't think it's a very large team. Gotcha. I can gotcha. look up some more information on this later, real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Um, but yeah, it just looks fucking phenomenal. Like I can't express like just it, it, it definitely enticed me for the fact that it's it's a a different take on how oh, dang, I um, have killed him. I game want a gun. And, and, and perspective can be used in gaming because that's the big thing. It's like we're so used to playing from certain perspectives in gaming that we don't often get asked, like, how do I change this perspective and create the gameplay and type story? Yeah. You know, we, we either default to third person or first person or 2D. Um, and, and there's not a lot of games that explore stuff like that. Yeah, more. different perspectives. Um, and I think that's important to kind of capitalize on 
like I, I think I think this could be a a way to kind of expand upon uh different perspectives in, in, in indie games and maybe even triple A depending on how well this game does. Um <clears throat> so Yeah, no, I'm, you know, I'm trying to think on, like, what's, well, you gotta really think on what's out there and left to do, like, perspectives based on games, because it's, uh, not a whole lot. Well, <laughs> like, I mean, there, tons there have been done. There are to do perspectives on the left. Yeah. Um, one of the ones that I, I saw as a concept a while ago was the shoulder mounted characters. Hmm. So, instead of it being, like, straight up, like, behind the back, like, yeah. you see your character, it's like, you have a camera mount like over their shoulders so you see their face a little bit and you still get third person movement kind of feel gotcha. but it's from this this camera perspective to the to the side of your character thought that was interesting i think it was an aliens kind of concept that a fan made okay um, got you got you and that was really cool I don't yeah know, no. I, I don't know if i could find that i mean you know um, i think deep diving into first person with vr and everything that's that's entailing is going to be the next move for a while i mean i don't feel like everybody VR, i feel like vr is still a good until we can get to a point where we can kind of make adaptive uh, controllers for our bodies to experience you know, every sense yeah. in the game, we're not going to get there. It's not going to feel that good. Like, it's cool for what it is now, but like I think I think AR is the, is the future of the Switch. Mm. Um, that's another topic. But, you know, for AR time. versus VR? Yeah. Mm. Um, but... That being said, though, yes. Um. So it sounds like it is a team, and they are using uh, Unreal Engine Five. They are. Yeah. Okay. Um. See, I thought they could have gotten away with using Unreal Engine Four because of like the quality they want to initially like um, yeah. emulate, but the fact that they are going balls deep and doing Unreal Five. It's a French indie game development studio. Got you. Um, it doesn't tell me how many people are in the team, but um, it, it's obviously very small. I don't think yeah. It's a big team. No, probably not a big team at all. Um, but for what they've accomplished, it looks phenomenal. Yeah, that looks crazy. That's one of the most insane games I've seen in yeah. the, in in a while. Um, I, I think uh, I think the game uh, you, you probably haven't heard of it. Um, Cry of Fear. That sounds familiar. It's an old uh, Half Life One. Mm. Uh, Markiplier, uh, the, 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 all, all the horror YouTubers are here today, by the way. Um, it's a very good uh, mod. It's essentially a full game, and it's a horror game. Gotcha. Um, like it, its quality is really, is really good. Um, but a game like that would be phenomenal in that perspective. And I think, I think this is going to catch a lot of eyes, especially from the bigger developers, which is I think uh, Sony, Ooh, Crash Bandicoot, and yeah. And I really, as a, as of it's only a, a kind of a teaser right now. I can't really, I can't really speak more on it um, than I'd like to. Um, but I think for sure when it when more comes out, we can talk about it again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that that sounds very. I'm definitely gonna try to do a playthrough of it when it comes out. So um, they have a release date, or is this just no, it's, teaser, it's, teaser? It's, this is just like this is like uh, the newest version of the update. Got you. There was a teaser a long time. I saw that was kind of showed like walking through the building, I think, but it's been a while since I've seen it. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but yeah, this is like the newest version of it. I'm really excited to see what it does. Um, so I guess we can go into our final big topic of the night. Sure. Um, so if you, and this might be for older people, if you're if you're a Zoomer, uh, I'm sorry, this may not be fly, may not apply to you. Maybe it does. Maybe you're old enough to, to have nostalgia. Not even old enough. Maybe you just kind of got the experience. I know a lot of people kind of hang on to older consoles, and you've gotten your hands on some of them. So you might, you might, you know. Um. So, what did we, what did we call this? this segment, uh, we uh, kind of called this segment video games. Video games. Yeah, where we've been, how we got here. How we I got want here. to. Okay, how we got here, I like. Yeah. So you want to keep this as a running segment where we kind of, every podcast we kind of go through the ages and kind of discuss our, our feelings about each generation. 
Sure. Yeah, that's a great idea. That way there's enticement for the next section and stuff. So this one, we'll cover a few in this one, so I feel like I feel like you don't have a lot of, you don't have a lot of references because we'll be Gold Region, Atari, and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. Um, Outside of, like, me playing a lot of Atari in a barber shop my mom used to take me to. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, he, uh, he was, a, he was a friend that went to high school with her, okay. and he, she used to take us to get our haircut occasionally, and okay. he had an Atari, awesome. um, set up in the shop, and me and my brothers would kind of just, while we're waiting our turn, just be playing on that's his Atari. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, it was great. Um, so definitely, I, I think Atari, you know, Capcom. Calm- yeah, absolutely. The monumental game. Um, and you know, we there's a crash in this one. So mm-hmm. we kind of set everything in motion for people to come back and you know. What? <laughs> you sound like you want to say more about ET. I, yeah, no. Okay. I, I, I can't. I don't have anything to say about ET that hasn't already been said. You want to go find some of the copies out in the middle of nowhere? Hell yeah! Let's, let's go. Up. Let's get some. You know, they're probably worth money now. Somebody's probably dug up enough to sell. You think so? They probably got a phenomenon kind of like price tag on them. Like somebody's like, I want to see how bad it was. <laughs> oh um, boy, are you in for a treat? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I do uh, I do definitely have um, like my my only experience with Atari is really with like Pong. Uh, my mom had a Coleco Vision. Um, you know, there was a Teleview stuff like that. So th- those are things that are before my time. My time, I was born. You know, nineties. That, that's yeah. when we had the. the SNES was still big, you know, we had 64 just coming out, so PlayStation came out 2000, like, we had, we had a lot of stuff going on in this time frame. Yeah, no, um, the 90s seemed litty titty. But the NES and the SNES, I still play, I mean, we, we play SNES all the Yeah, time. we play SNES and NES all the time. Okay. Um, like, Mario, the original Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, fucking, the original Kirby, fucking, you know, so much, so much nostalgia on that, the original Zelda, Level 2, um, just so much, you know, and, and back in black was like, <laughs> and now yeah. I can play those games no problem. I'm like, oh, this is I get it now. Yeah, the original. Let um, me tell you, I stayed up countless nights playing the original <laughs> Castlevania. Oh man. Did I get far? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I played. It. I was um, playing it. Yeah, fucking, I love, I love, uh, I love old games. Oh man, I get an old game itch. You know what? I, re- I wish that I still actually had on hold on hand. Um, you know those, uh, those kind of compact like five in one video game joysticks that yeah, you plug into the TV. Like one of those fucking plug and play? Yeah, you needed uh, like double A batteries, about four of the bitches, yeah. and you plug them in <laughs> to the CRT. Yeah. Oh the man. White cables. Yeah. The ones that uh we had, me and my family, we had the Pac Man, uh Galaga. Pac Man's a good one. Arcade we had Arcade. the yeah. It had Pac Man, Galaga, Mappy. I spent a lot of time playing those. It had um, what was it? It was it was the race car one, um, uh, Rally something. Yeah, I think. Uh, some Super Rally or something like that. Yeah, but we actually had two ones that had a race car one. It was a different race car one that yeah, was like three D. Like, yeah, there was one that was three D, and then there was one that was like the top down view, but you like yeah, kind of looked like Pac Man esque kind of. Yeah, thing. it had a Dig Dug. Dig Dug. Bro. Dig Dug is fantastic. <laughs> And then we actually had one that was uh, a unique little plug and play. Okay. That was a SmackDown versus Raw WWE plug and play. Interesting. It was. It was. Um. <laughs> I don't even think it was. It was. It was eight bit. So it was like a two D five. No, no. If anything, it oh. was like sixteen bit. Yeah. Okay. It was around sixteen bit and. Yeah, it was like a two D kind of fighter, but like a three D space. Interesting. In a way. Yeah, it was um, <laughs> it was very fun, uh, very goofy. Those it was, it was dumb fun. Uh, enjoyed that one for sure. I want to find it online, see if I can re- yeah, repurchase it. That'd be fun. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, where video games started is definitely an interesting spot. Oh, for uh, sure. It, it, there's so much, like the tricks that they had to use to get a lot of the things to even work. Yeah, to to run. Yeah, like that's what amazes me. <laughs> Because, like, when you think about it, today we kind of take for granted the kind of shit you get to do. Oh, yeah. Like, back in the day, getting getting more than, like, one or two enemies on screen was a fucking god. Right, it was a mind-blowing. Like, and having having detail on your characters was all of a sudden, it's like, oh my god. Like, 
when you had a when you had a character model that was just like actually detailed. Yeah, that you could actually see like, you know, <laughs> that character has eyes. Yeah. And they're wearing a shirt. <laughs> like that blew people's minds. They they have feet. It's crazy. Yeah, like you can yeah. tell. <laughs> you know, this stuff was wild, man. And and nowadays, like this is, I I brought up this this segment to this podcast specifically yeah. to to kind of like bring out the fact that we we do need to reflect as gamers. I feel like it's important to reflect on what I mean. I feel like with any what where we've come. Yeah. To really, to really work on what what is now, because like with film, you know, you can't just ignore centuries of history of, of film making and movies. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I mean, at the end of the day, these these are these are projects. These are art. Right? Yeah. To some degree, some people treat games like they are literally like the the end all be all like form of communication to some degree. Absolutely. And they have that capacity. There's no medium like video games, and I feel like that's something that a lot of like people that only video games are caught up in. They're like, oh, you know, um, you're you're interacting, so like it's not you're watching a movie, which is my issue with a lot of Naughty Dog and PlayStation properties. Like, a lot of the time, it feels like I'm doing nothing but walking, and then I'm, I'm in a cutscene. Then a cutscene happens, and then you walk again. Yeah, and then you walk. The cutscene happens. You know, Xbox has done the same thing. Like, yeah. Halo, you know, you could argue. Um, and so, it's and nothing is wrong <laughs> with walking and shit happens, but yeah. if that is like about eighty five percent of your game when you advertise it as something else, we have a problem. Yeah, when you, when you, <laughs> when you post political discourse from a certain half of it is you walking. I'm sorry, buddy. I, I don't think it's as deep as you're making it out to be. It wasn't all walking. They went golfing one time. Yo, no, no, it's not all walking, bro. <laughs> they at least you know. They were conversations. They talked. <laughs> I saw a blade of grass move a bit to the left. That Yo, was entertaining. There, there was a building that you enter that had five zombies in it, and you you do things with that. <laughs> <laughs> probably should. Probably. Yeah, we're, it's we're, too late like, to go I reserve now, right? right? I feel like we're very, yeah. Very anti PlayStation. It's not even anti PlayStation. That was anti Neil Druckmann. Make better games. <laughs> make better make, games. Make games of quality, but make them without being contentious. Yeah. Like, that's my thing. Don't be a fucking dickhead about it. You aren't goddamn Picasso. <laughs> like, you aren't fucking end-all, be-all game developer. You just put lesbians in your game. <laughs> right. Get out of here, man. Just make video games, Neil. Just tell your story and don't try to tell people they're stupid because they didn't understand the political implications of it. Not even that. It was more like calling somebody stupid for making a game with aspects of politics, but not solely focusing on said aspects. You didn't. You didn't. You made a game with politics in it, and it didn't fucking uh, drill in your concept of political beliefs and discourse into the player. Uh, bad fucking video game. Like, here, <laughs> like I'm sure. I'm sure he can't. He can't be that bad of a guy, but just the things I've seen from him, it just makes me. You know what I most I like this about old games? And this this might be like kind of pushing the timeline slightly forward, but uh you really miss buying a game and then you uh yeah, you had a game. You don't have to pay for five billion of DLC and you can wait for bug fixes to come out. <laughs> Not even bug fixes, bro. Like bugs don't bother me, if I'm gonna be honest. Like, I mean, bugs can unless they're like absolutely abhorrent. Like your game saves is fucking yeah, your game save wipes itself from existence, or you move left and now you're like out of the screen. Like, <laughs> like as, as as if it's not entirely game breaking, like you know, it do it be what it is because nobody's ever gonna pump it out a perfect. It is, it do what it is. Nobody's ever gonna pump out a perfect game with like zero bugs. No, look at Neil Druckmann. All of his games are perfect. <laughs> no flaws. But, no, I do very much miss buying a full, yeah. complete game. Um, just buying just paying $60 for, like, a single level. Yeah. Shout out to Hi-Fi Rush. <laughs> it's not even $60. It's not even $60. It's, 
It's thirty. It's thirty bucks. A full on triple A title. But you only have to buy one thing once and get a complete and awesome. And then you've had four sets. Yeah. Which people are still talking about that game as if it was good. Are they? Yeah. I haven't heard anybody I talk saw, about Force Spoken since it released. I saw a review and was like, why? Like, it's like somebody talking about how old the game is because of like how it has like such a deep open world, and I was like, have you played the game? <laughs> yeah, have you played the game? Like, I don't know if you, I don't know if you sat there and just like watched it. I hey, know. I mean, look. The looks of the game. I mean, it looks at at some points look great. It looks good. The it open world good. can be beautiful, unless you're playing on PC and your game is running at 16 frames per second. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, not even that. It's, it's not even like the frames are an issue. Like deep and beautiful world are arbitrary terms. When at the end of the day, there's nothing to fucking do. Yeah. Like, I hate people who are like, oh, this game is so good. Look at all this graphics and, like, look at all these small details. I'm like, I don't give a fuck how many blades of grass exist on this fucking plane of yeah. existence. There's nothing. It's like the breath. The people are like, oh, Breath of the Wild is so deep and so good. Um, it, It's just, it's, there's so much to do. And I'm like, there, there's just a barren wasteland, one fucking stable, and then 50 miles <laughs> yeah, of fucking One fucking nothing. stable. Yeah. And, like... In, in, in terms of games like that, don't try to make that the, the, the point that you die on. Like, the hill that yeah. you die on. Like, okay, because that would be like me saying Shadow of the Colossus, one of my favorite games of all time, has a deep, immersive, and beautiful world. No. The game looks great, especially the remake. Yeah. Um, but that world is literally you, your horse, some lizards... Some Maybe a bird will fly by and entertain you. Um, about fifteen colossi, and then that's it. <laughs> like, like, that's like that is all. I will, I will never come out here and say the Shadow of the Colossus has the greatest world. Like Elden Ring, <laughs> Elden Ring you know, people talk about all Elden Ring. Is, it, it also sucks that you're masking the fact that like, uh, realistically, yeah, uh, Elden Ring. I'll, I'll, I'll give Elden Ring at least a little bit of grace. It suffers less. Because most parts of its worlds are at least populated by, you know, an enemy here or there. And the yeah. lands between, at least its different worlds as well, usually have, like, sort of themed enemies. You know, yeah. you're going to find these enemies down here because you're right here. You know what I mean? And uh, you're not really going to find them up out here find just because. Skellyman John and his fucking Crusaders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, and I, re I really didn't really, the only time I had a problem with the emptiness of Elden Ring's world is when I was trying to go somewhere, specifically get to this point from point yeah, A to B. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're, like, fresh, brand new, just happened to pop into this world, that shit didn't feel empty at all, because you had no idea what was going to crawl up your ass. Yeah, you didn't know <laughs> so, what yeah. not be at. Uh, so, it, it definitely gives... It it gives like first playthrough grace, but it yeah, also yeah. I feel like the same on second playthrough is only when you like actually kind of come across that like ah oh, this is kind of empty yeah. issue. I, it's the same thing with Breath of the Wild. The first playthrough of Breath of the Wild is magical. It's, yeah, it, it's really good. Like I said in the last podcast, like that's where I feel like Breath of the Wild is at its strongest. When I I literally was playing for the first time, so I didn't know anything, and everything I came across was so cool. You know, absolutely. But yeah, I, I would never go out and tout that this world is 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 big, massive, yeah. beautiful thing, and it's like all you do is go you just, one direction. You, you fucking you <laughs> wander like 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 you wander with nothing to do for like half the game, and then you have like small enemy encounters. Yeah. Granted, Elden Ring had more enemy encounters and more like actual secrets to find in that game, but yeah. like, there was a lot of nothing. There was tons of nothing, but that's kind of bound to happen, especially if you make yeah. a game that big. Yeah. Like, even a game such as uh, Grand Theft Auto, like, once you get to certain areas, GTA Five, yeah. there's kind of just a bound of nothing. Oh, no, yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> Like, so... I mean, it's, just, it's just the nature of Elden Ring. Yeah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, Unfortunately. I don't think that problem will ever really get well, solved. Be, that's the actual problem. Let me get off topic because we're, like, we're bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I do want to, I do want to, like, so... You talk about the NES, and, and I want to talk about the SNES. I feel like the SNES was really a golden age of gaming. Like, in my opinion. Um, 
just so many just really good titles. You have Star Fox, you have Donkey Kong Country, you have fucking Risk Star. You have Sen- Sinestro, Genesis, Goddamn Tarot. Super Metroid. Fucking, oh my god. The Genesis. Pulse Man? Pulse Man? <laughs> yeah. On Sega Genesis, Game Freak? Oh uh, man. You had Sonic Vector 1 Man, and Vector 2. Man. Oh, Vector man. man. Vector Man is so good. That fucking game is just so much fun. Yeah. Um, Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles. Fuck, oh my god. Yeah. There's so much, so much of that generation that just. Still, Absolutely slaps! It still holds up today. That's the thing. Yeah. It, it's not just that it was good then, it's still it's good, still good now. now. And that's like. like and that's kind game. of a thing I fear with like games coming out now. I I feel like they are going to depreciate really fucking hard. Oh, and they do. I mean, look yeah. at games like Call of Duty. Really, they're just disasters for the most part. Yeah. Like you, you're getting basically the same game with a new skin, and it doesn't hold up as well as you'd like it to. I mean, Call of Duty does actually do good with like different developers and how they play, how they how they build their game up. Core mechanics are there, but like Treyarch is more arcadey. Yeah. Infinity Ward is more like simulator, and then and uh, fucking. Sledgehammer is garbage. <laughs> I'm gonna spit on the body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sledgehammer, they they try, but like when it comes time to like doing podcasts, like anything Sledgehammer has made in the past forever has just been mid. Which ones did they make again? They made World War Two and Vanguard. Woo! <laughs> that is a. Uh... Yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah, that's not too good of a resume. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like the the yeah, like you said, the yearly releases. Um, I feel like even sometimes the addition of paid additional content also depreciates a game. Yeah, because like if if the servers ever go off, you lose all that. Yeah, not only do you lose all that, but but like and, and then you have like like if a game doesn't get all those DLC packs until the second release, you know, because the game doesn't sell well, you don't get those either. Yeah. Lose you all lose of all of that content. It like you to never be seen again. Like fucking um. And then you got like too much content added <laughs> to the yeah. point where it's like there's no way anybody could ever <laughs> like afford this shit. Um, like I don't know if you've <laughs> taken a look at like as as an example because this is usually a popular example, especially in the uh, FGC. Um, Tekken 7 and all of its DLC. I don't know anything about Tekken 7. You looked on Steam? No. For the price to buy all no. the DLC. You're looking at like a solid close to 200 mark. Oh my god, no. Uh, <laughs> the Dragon Ball Universe? Oh my god. Oh, the game that's been going on for forever? <laughs> yeah, they're never releasing the Universe 3. No. We're, we're getting Budokai Tenkai 2 real soon. Yeah, thank god. Yeah, um, um, but no, I I I bought I bought C Universe two again on PC. I have it on Xbox. Yeah, and I rebought it on PC because my mom plays on Xbox. Yeah, um, so like I I had to buy all the DLC again, Jesus. and that's like on off sale, like you get full price. You're looking upwards of like two hundred dollars for that like for that game. Jesus like, Christ, it's, bro! It's just as bad. It's so bad. <laughs> and like that's the thing is like digital games don't. Depend yeah. Like a physical game, you know, five years down the line, if it's not something that people need and it's rare, you know, or it's worth the money, they typically drop in price. Did you just. Did I just duck you? Yeah, you just slid me into the corner. Fuck you. Fuck the car. Like, <laughs> um, like, like, fuck, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 on Steam is still 60 fucking dollars. Praise God. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, still 60 bucks, bro. Like, why? The greatest Call of Duty game. And it goes on sale for like half price of thirty dollars, forty dollars. Yeah. And I'm like I'm like, who in the right mind is paying sixty bucks for a physical Call of Duty game, you know? I nobody in their right I mean, mind is I, the answer. I've thought about it just because modded zombies are just a thing that sounds like fun. Really? Yeah. How do you mod? What what do you what do you I do? Think, I think I think they have Steam Workshop now. Yeah, okay. I I might be wrong. Gotcha, gotcha. Um but Point B uh-huh. is that yeah I miss I miss having being able to buy a game and just it being done. Yeah, I do miss that. 
Um, it was a fantastic like feeling. You know? like you have so many games, and that's the generation I want to play. Is the Super Bowl PlayStation One and Xbox One. Or I like Dream Cast. Or Dreamcast. Yeah, Dreamcast. Uh, that's what I think. Uh, do, you, do you put Dreamcast with PlayStation One, or do you play the PS Two? Because I, I feel like Dreamcast is kind of easy. I usually stick it with PS One. Really? Yeah, because it's like. I mean, because the Dreamcast is so much more advanced. Yeah, it it was, but it's also like I still feel like it's it kind of satisfies that like that kind of middle ground to where you have your sixty four right. Yeah. After the sixty four, I would put the PS one above it, you know, in terms of uh, you know, advancements, and then I would put the Dreamcast. Like I just feel like it kind of satisfies that that trio of you know this this level, and then this one, and then this one. Okay. Before we move on to, like, the crazy shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. So I, I feel like it just, it, it makes everything kind of fit cohesively better. Okay, alright. I mean, like, the PS1 era, I mean, that's just bands, just fucking yeah. Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, fucking, oh my god, that, that was a generation of gaming in and of itself. Yeah. <laughs> Castlevania Symphony of the Night, fucking Final Fantasy 5 and 6. PS1 and seven and eight. Yeah, seven was on PS1. God, the PlayStation one had PlayStation no. one was loaded, boss. No, like, no, no, six was six on PS1. Six was was Terra. Yeah, and Kefka. was that PS1 or was that was that the generation before? No, I think that was PS1. Okay, it hmm. was just you know before they decided to like you know do the Dreamcast. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, and then you have fucking then you have sixty four with Banjo Kazooie, Mario sixty four. Diddy Car Racing, Mario Kart 64, fucking Star Fox 64, Zelda yeah. Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, fucking Donkey Kong Country, God, 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 <laughs> Goldeneye 007, Perfect Golden Eye, Perfect Heart, F-Zero GX, F- that's F-Zero GX, or right, X, GX. actually, not GX, yeah. yeah, GX is GameCube, fucking, oh my God, that generation of time, and then Dreamcast, you have Night City Dream, you have Space Jam Tower, you have Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, yeah. you have fucking so many games, Definitely, we are staying inside, boys, because I got the newest game generation. Yeah, like we such a good generation of gaming, and I fucking love it. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, no, it was it was great. Um, don't don't really think, and because of all those titles that yeah. you listed, like are so, re- they were all each and every one a revolution in and of themselves, oh, yeah. almost. Oh yeah, like I mean, Mario sixty four set the standard for for three D. Platformers, like and just 3D action games in general, because like it, it's like it, it it really laid the groundwork for how a 3D game should feel. Yeah, like without without Mario 64, I think 3D games would still be handled in a different way. Probably, um, and it's just like d- yeah, that entire generation with everything they've laid out. Everything they they've introduced with the first experience on 3D, with all the experiments that they've done, I don't think it'll be ever repeated. No. Like there's there's not gonna be a gaming revolution like that Impossible. ever again. Impossible. Yeah. Um. So. Definitely goaded. Um. But I think I think we've been going on for probably about yeah it's probably been going on for like an hour, almost hour and a half now. So I think we're gonna get close to wrapping it up. Um, okay. I just wanna on this on this specific. Topic about the generation of games. Some some specific memories I, I had of playing games. Um, you know, I, I played I played the absolute shit out of Mario sixty four. I played the absolute shit out of uh, Ocarina of Majora. Donkey Kong sixty four was a big one for me. Yeah. There's so much to do in that game, and I felt like I never completed it. Well, um, that's too much to do. I think that game like has upwards of like it's like a thousand collectibles or something. Yeah, it's like I think I think it's I think it's all about like. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if it happens like that. I don't think anything like that happened again because that might have been a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Well, like Banjo Kazooie, oh my god, that was a top tier game. Yeah, absolutely. Banjo Tooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day. Like, man, there's so many games like that. That one was a trip, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> Conker's was. I'm surprised Conker's not made. Conker's was bonkers, bro. <laughs> they... I, think, I think just because it was at the end of the N64 lifetime, people were like, whatever, fucking throw it out. <laughs> like, I don't think they would have got away with that any other time. 
<laughs> Certainly not nowadays. Nah. <laughs> you would think they'd get away with it nowadays, actually. Oh, a lot of the stuff that people do get away with, but I don't think they would have got away with that one. Wow, I am <laughs> nightmare bound now. Thank you for that. Um, I'm leaving. No. <laughs> um, like it's just something different. Right? It's, it's, it's a spiral. I played the shit out of spiral because it's so much fun. Maybe too much. So much. Even the bad games. Even the bad games. People can have memories about <laughs> Mortal Kombat mythology. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, no. The next era did like step it up with the tools that was out late. Dive into the next two generations. We, yeah, we'll next do that next time for sure. Um, because I there's so much to talk about in that era. Absolutely, oh, there's God. too much to go into. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think what, what can I what we'll have to think about it uh, for next session recording. But like, what what do you think? What do you think the recording wise you wanna you wanna tackle? Um, like what kind of what what topics? I think, oh, yeah. since we're talking about the generation of Xbox 360 and, and, and GameCube, I, I personally definitely want to talk about um, arcade, the Xbox Arcade, and how that opened up gaming as a whole gotcha. for, for, like, ca- for like casual consumers. Alright, that's a good um, idea. That's... Because like, nowadays indie games are a really commonplace thing, but like during that generation, like having an indie game on a platform on a console wasn't really Well, we did forget to talk about physical arcades in general. I mean, we're gonna okay. probably have to go back to that. On we the can next talk about physical <laughs> arcades next session. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go back to that. that. Um, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, Especially in the vein of like <laughs> one of the communities we're strongly into, which is the SBC. I mean, strongly into. I'm, I mean, I I like fighting games, but I I like I don't really love the way they tend to doing tournaments. I play them. Yeah. But I definitely am casual at playing them. Our boy, maybe we can get him on next session because we'll be talking about fighting games. Yeah. Um, we can bring in Johnny. Um, best in the <laughs> best in the that is best to, best that to is ever handle. exist. That is his handle. Man, man, man is definitely sniffing what he's selling. Our boy Johnny Sins. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I would love to know Johnny That'd Sins. That'd be great. Oh, what a <laughs> wonderful person to like have in the back pocket, right? Like, <laughs> everybody's favorite lawyer, doctor, fucking everyone's scientist. favorite lawyer, doctor, plumber, scientist, astronaut, ah, oh, mechanic. <laughs> you name it, the Sins got it, bro. <laughs> Sin <Carnegie. laughs> You render Johnny Sins as a boss fight. <laughs> He walks up in the ball, like the straight up bald head white t shirt form, yeah. and like behind him are rows, just different alternates. <laughs> <Yeah, different laughs> <laughs> it's like, Johnny, the sins of man. I pay, I pay money for that. I, I would, I would sell my house for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What a um, goaded idea. <laughs> yeah, we'll get John Sins in the clock chat. I'll oh. have him up on Twitter. <laughs> Yo, Johnny. Yo, Johnny You want to swing by for our podcast? You want to join the Gamer Dad podcast, my guy? Sins, uh, I am sure of all the jobs he has done, a dad has to be one of them. <laughs> the, the dad. The dad among dads. The one who got milk and came home. <laughs> we'll talk about we'll talk about uh, the next generation of gaming um, uh, specifically the Xbox Arcade and how it, how it brought indies into the forefront of, of modern gaming um, I 
guess we'll talk about the FGC. We'll try to get Johnny Sins. <laughs> we could talk about the sins of gaming. We could talk about that. That could be a good, I mean, we good about topic ET to already, run. So I don't know what else we could talk about. Oh, uh, no. E.T. was the original sin. That was like Adam <laughs> eating the apple. <laughs> the rest um, is history. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. the now second episode. Which is it's cool that we've done the second episode. I don't know if it's going to go up Saturday. I may, take, I may have to take Sunday. Gotcha. Yeah. Just because we had to record late. Into this a little session. bit. We had uh, tornadoes, y'all. We had weather in our, we... in our home state. Oklahoma, boys. Oh, man. <laughs> Bless his prayers. You gotta love it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I definitely, I definitely am, I'm, I'm enjoying this so far, and it, it, it got decent views. Yeah. Personally, for, for my channel, at least. Uh, you know, I don't think it's what my subscribers are exactly looking for um, in terms of content, but, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully it's not terrible, too. Hopefully, you know, hopefully we can expand our horizons and market some more. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it up with this. <sighs> Um, well, we talked about our current projects, and I don't want to double double cross that too much. So if you know, if you can just go ahead. And yeah. Go. So let's just um, let's just but sign I do, it off. I do want to say, um, hopefully, in the next couple of episodes, maybe maybe two from now, I'm working on maybe producing some personal music. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, I've got a few applications that I need to download and try. Yeah. And then uh, artwork. Hopefully, we can have some official artwork that is not just cobbled together. My video editing software. Um, so, and if you guys like, it, you know, definitely follow some some ideas for topics for future episodes that you may want us to talk like you know talk about. We're not strictly locking ourselves to video gaming. While it's something we're both very passionate about, um, we're both open, I think, to different topics in general. So yeah, we can you know, dive into some different things. Maybe uh, maybe over time we can talk more about maybe like you know traditional media like TV. Sitcoms, anime, movies, because we talked about the Mario movie, but like, yeah. we can go more depth of, of, our, of our viewpoints and stuff like that. But that, that I feel like, uh, you know, just going forward until we get to a, a certain grounding, I feel like we can kind of tackle those topics later. Um, but definitely let us know yeah, what you guys are interested in. Can, we can definitely talk about whatever. Um, and hopefully we can get some, some guests to liven it up a little bit from time to time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and. Uh, we're gonna cut this episode here. Not nearly as chaotic as the first one. I no, feel like. no, the first one was definitely I, I don't chaotic. I feel like we got too far off tangent, like last time. I think everything kind of looped back, except for the Sid's part. <laughs> yeah, Johnny Sid's. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm gonna ask him on Twitter. I'm gonna do it. And next episode, I'm gonna leave if he responds to that. I'm gonna Please. Put it on on screen if he responds. And if he does, if he if he says yes, I'm doing it. We're doing it. We're yeah, we'll change. absolutely have Johnny Sid's on um, here. We love you, our boy. I mean, well, it seems my favorite form of thought that it's not some older scientist. <laughs> He's like Barbie from <laughs> <laughs> He's the male Barbie. You can't change his hair, though. No, he's not involved. He, he, he is everywhere, though. He's just... <laughs> he could pull off a mask, Mr. Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> um, but no, thank you guys for listening. Uh, if you made it to the end of the podcast, uh, I do um, want to say thank you, especially. Yes, um, thank if you. you. If you made it to the end, leave a comment down below saying, fucking Johnny Sins our boy. Yeah, let's bring Johnny Sins on here. Yeah, he can't just, ignore all of us. Just type in the comment section, Johnny Sins our boy. Yeah. And we'll know that you made it to the end here. Leave a comment. I'll shout. We'll shout you out at the end of the next podcast. Absolutely, we'll give shout outs. Um, I'm definitely down for that. Um, while we're on pandering mode, uh, you know, if at any point you know we get some sponsors, definitely would love that. Johnny Sands, come through, my guy. <laughs> Sponsored by Johnny. S- hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're getting off the rails. All right, uh, yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, for sure, uh, for real though. If you, if you do enjoy it and you made it to the end, leave, leave that below. We'll, we'll call you out next uh, next podcast anyway. We definitely will be down for that. Um, and again, leave comments on, on topics you'd like us to discuss on, on future Horizon episodes. And yeah, I uh, am one of your hosts, Sean Goo. You can find me at YouTube and Twitch.com, Twitch.tv, not .com, where I produce gaming content. Um, currently, I'm still uh, editing out Hi Fi Rush and Pokemon Violet. Um, and then I think pretty regularly it's going to be Minecraft for the most part until um, I pick up something that I really want to do of 
Um, which I've got a lot of Minecraft stuff backlogged too, so I'll check that out. Um, maybe Minecraft Legends. Uh, I have some other stuff I'm doing for Legends, so that could be a thing. Um, and then on Twitch, I'm trying to stream um, just in general. Uh, I've been playing some Doom 2. Um, I might play some Ultra Kill. Um, I might just do whatever I'm streaming. I'll be a variety streamer. That's pretty much what you can expect from me on my content. Um, and then... Yep, absolutely. Uh, Ultimate Angelo here. Um, still working on projects to get up and started, <laughs> <Yeah>. but <laughs> very soon, very soon is when I want to push out something. Um, aiming for mid May. Mid May, okay, okay. Because uh, trying to get several, several things actually going at the same time. Okay. Um, but I, I will say, don't try to have like multiple different places. Oh no, you can't play them. not that, not um, that. Uh, certainly not that. But just. Different little projects and different things. I just trying to figure it out that I still kind of want to do this way yeah. or that way. You um, can also uh, you can also do like drawing streams. Ah, uh, yeah. Just on here, you can draw in your own custom game. Yeah. 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 My wife has definitely wanted me to do that. Actually, yeah. in particular. Those are cool. I like um, those so, on the way. On <laughs> it's the way. definitely on the way. We're we'll hit whenever, you guys up really soon. Whenever though. you produce, you know, I'll link stuff. Uh, the, the channels in the description, so we'll, we'll have that going. And um, hopefully, I think maybe we'll probably get like a few more episodes on my channel specifically, and then I think we're gonna have a separate channel once we get a lot of the a lot of the the branding done. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a separate channel that I'll I'll move all of these initial episodes over to. Um, they'll still be up on this channel, but they'll also be linked over to the channel um, for this specific podcast. If you guys you know be able to find it there, but um, once we get the branding done, that'll happen. But that's not probably gonna be for a little bit. Um, I don't want to set a specific. On that. Yeah. <laughs> um, knowing my workflow, uh, setting dates <laughs> have been poor for me. Um, but yeah, yeah, my guy. I, I appreciate uh, again. I appreciate Twitch. I have a problem doing that whenever I in, whenever I do content. Yeah. Um, with the keyboard videos that I do, which I have another one that I another another video I want to put out at some point. I always I always say my appreciation for everything like seventeen times. I need to stop myself. It, it happens, bro. <laughs> you, they, they, you are loved. watches my stuff it means more to me than the world can ever know yeah like it's not about i'm not trying to do this to be the next pewdiepie i'm not doing this to be the next mr beast i'm not doing this to be whoever i'm doing this because it's fun it yeah. is a fun thing for me to do on the side of my other life projects that i have going on and if this pops off and it pops off but i'm not banking on it you know yeah exactly this is something i enjoyed doing from a, i'm a dude who, who grew up in the glory days of, of let's play yes sir the glory days <laughs> so um and at any point, once we do get the second channel up soon, we may, I may look at doing a stream on the Twitch channel, so, like, we could also do different types of content. Maybe this could just be our, our joint thing. Um, yeah, this could turn into a joint channel. Gamer Dad Bod, or Gamer Dad Bods. Yeah. Well, well, maybe we could just take the cast out and just put the, the channel joint and the branding settled. We use, like, Gamer Dad Bod something. Two Gamer Dad, <laughs> two best Gamer Dad in life. <laughs> Dad bod games. Dad bod games. Hey, there we go. Bad. There you um, go. That's <laughs> spoiler for the future, you guys. Our whole plan on this one. Um, but thank you again. Um, we're out of here. We'll see you guys next week with a uh, new podcast uh, where we'll be talking about different miscellaneous topics. We'll have Johnny Sins on as a guest for sure. No, ga- absolute guarantee he's gonna be there. No Johns. No Johns. Only the Johnny. <laughs> And, uh, this is Swoon, and this is Angela. Appreciate it, guys. Signing off. Be kind to each other. No, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I gotta pee my knee. I gotta piss. <laughs> <laughs>